how has inflation impacted your business? In a few words, just give us that. How has inflation in Nigeria affected your business? Well, uh, inflation has affected my business in several ways. Um, I'm grumbling with the rising cost of production, of doing things. The price at which um, I went to the market to pick items and the second, the following day, you cannot meet such things at that price. So it has to make you to do a lot of rethinking, a lot of planning and a lot of cutting um, cost in order to be able to stay up with it. That's, that's uh, quite interesting. Now, when, we, um, so you, when we're referring to the industry, the building material industry, you know, what has been happening? Because we know that, of course, inflation is what we have here in Nigeria a, a whole lot of times. It is something that just keeps occurring and recurring. You know, so what can you say about it? Is this reducing the number of customers um, coming for this building materials or what exactly is happening now? Okay, what's happening now, it's, it's reducing the quality of people who come to buy quality items. Right now, people are looking for um, alternatives, cheaper alternatives towards a, to, um, to building. And what that does is the purchasing power has reduced. So it's only those who see it, deem it as a necessity to um, install quality products building materials for their building. Otherwise, other people look for the shortest um, means to do that. Either you go for um, a fairly used one, or you look for um, a China, uh, maybe, a, um, let me not use what I've used, a more inferior one, something that you can afford. So it's more like people are going for what is affordable than actually what will last. Okay, so, uh, so, so um, has this have, actually, um, has this inflation issue uh, reduced the quality of materials we have in the, um, in the building material industry? Do people now go for substandard materials, you know, instead of, because um, in, in the past, I think this year, we had issues of um, building collapsing. And that is uh, most likely due to the fact that they, they made use of substandard materials and, uh, and products. So um, do you think that is what's, what's prevalent now, given the inflation challenge in the country? Uh, well, that's what is prevalent, because even when you even see the original product, or you need to be very careful, because now you have different brand names. And so with that, you need to focus on quality if actually you want to get the best result. But if people are, but when you have unqualified people manning building um, projects, they look for ways of cutting costs and um, look for substandard materials to be able to meet up with their budgets. So um, the right now in the market, you have a lot of substandard materials. And so that is where the um, standard of, uh, organization of Nigeria has to step up and other relevant agencies to step up to see how to regulate the um, infiltration of this um, substandard materials into the marketplace. Because if something goes wrong, lives are going to be affected. So it has to be the saving of life before making a profit. Okay. Um, now, are there any um, specific strategies in place by... Um, the operators of the business of this um, building in um, building material industry are there strategies in place to ensure that they are not um, hit by this issue of inflation too extremely? Well, um, they can only try as um, building people can only try to see how to um, cushion the effect of this inflation. But remember, remember, this is the first time we're experiencing inflation at this level. This is the first time that the prices of building material will go as high as the way it currently is. So everybody, it hits everybody on, on our way. So there has been a lot of strategies that people are adopting to see how to make um, things improve. But um, when you look at the, the measurements, uh, the, the measures that they have put in place, um, 
matching with the rate at which inflation is galloping. And we can say that little or nothing has really been done. But to say that they have not been putting some things in place, they have been trying. But let's just see how um, demand and supply will be able to meet at this junction. Okay, very well. Um, now, let's, uh, let's go to the government now. What do you think, what would you advise the government to do differently to ensure that this building materials are still affordable to um, consumers so that we don't have them going for substandard materials and then erecting structures that can't stand the test of time? What do you think the government can do differently in this regard? Okay, one of the things the government can do is to protect our indigenous industries who produce this um, building materials, then also look for a way to subsidize um, building materials, very essential building materials, because, for example, you cannot compromise with rods. Your rods are going to be used. You cannot compromise on certain things that you cannot easily find. So if the government can find a way to um, introduce some kind of subsidy into it to help um, the, both the manufacturers and the end users be able to afford um, quality because if we if quality is introduced more lives are going to be saved but if substandard products are encouraged um, then more lives are going to be lost and it's going to actually affect um, the ease of doing business so the government has to look for a way to um, encourage both manufacturers um, um, importers with some level of um, incentive them also the issue of um, the exchange rates i know the government is doing quite enough to see how to um balance um the if the um, the the mm -hmm. exchange rates but there there are some measures these are little little measures um here and there just a little hinge will actually swing um wide uh, an open door that's just my take Mr. Mr. Wilson, um, we also have Mr. Emmanuel. I don't know if he's connected. Mr. Emmanuel, good morning. Okay, I hear Mr. Emmanuel has, has not joined us yet, so we just stay on you, Mr. Wilson. So um, there is this right. notion or mindset about Nigerians that we always seem to adapt eventually, no matter how um, the price of a particular commodity is increased. Eventually, you know, Nigerians might just complain a little bit. After a while, they get used to it and they just adjust and, you know, move on with life like nothing happened. How would you say the consumers of this uh, building materials have reacted? How are they reacting towards the increase in, um, in prices? Are they adjusting to it or are they going for other products or, you know, other substandards, just like we earlier mentioned, other substandard materials, or are they adjusting to the new norm and, you know, and actually patronizing this same materials at this new cost? Well, thank you for that great question. Um, at the moment, um, the three rules apply. Nigerians are trying to adjust some are looking for um, a way to get alternatives to what they are currently using. Then while others have just made up their mind to let us go for what we can afford, even if it's inferior, it's better to we'll keep buying it than um, diverting the money that could have been channeled to something else to buy the quality one. So with either way, um, Nigeria is one of the most resilient, um, re resilient country, um, country in the world where no matter what happens, people just have a way to adjust back. I think I uh, will say that the elastic limit of Nigerians, it seems is higher in, in this part of the world than any other part. So um, people, are, those who can afford it are making adjustments. Those who cannot afford it are looking for substandard materials to use, at least um, to, to bridge in the gap. That, that's what has been happening around. Inflation usually is as a result of um importation, um, exchange rate, and every other thing. What would you say about um, many of our products? Because I know some of these build building materials are imported. You know, um, some are locally sourced, but mostly they are imported. How can, um, what structures can be put in place to ensure that we can actually uh, manufacture our own materials here in Nigeria? without having to outsource from other countries. 
Okay, thank you for that great question. Well, Nigeria is blessed with vast mineral and um, human resources. So I think one of the things uh, we need to look at as a country is to look inward rather than looking outward. We need to strengthen our local industry. We have the resources rather than going out. We need to focus on made in Nigerian products because when we begin to patronize made in Nigerian products, it takes us far. Um, it helps us to be able to um, develop our own. For example, our weather and the um, external weather and aren't, aren't the same. So when we, uh, when the the FRC is on Nigerian products and uh, Nigerian goods and services, I think it helps to improve the economy and also uh, the, the ecosystem. Because what we have, we have a great treasure here in this country, but because we are unable to harness them properly, um, that's the reason why it seems as if um, we rely so much on importation. And amazing, people come in here, um, buy what we have and export and return it back to us. So that's to tell you that we have the raw material. We just need to see how to um, create an enabling environment and, and harness what we have to the best of our advantage. And we can sell to the outer world. Very well, like they very say, well, Mr. Nielsen, we need to look for how to drive homemade products and test them until they work. All right, all say. right. Thank you uh, for that. For that. Um input uh, Mr. Wilson. Now let's uh, go to the cost of housing. In Nigeria today um, the cost of housing has become in fact something else. Yeah. You almost, the average Nigerian can almost not afford a two-bedroom flat for instance especially in a state in a state like Lagos State. What do you think government can do when it comes to um, the accessibility of affordable housing for Nigerians? Well, that, that's a very tough question uh, because um, if we check out the way things used to be 30 years ago, we discovered that there were a lot of... Um, we real estate industry had not grown to this level. And so um, we people had alternatives, but right now, um, every available space has been choked up. So everybody, but um, the, the, uh, the people who own houses and people who rent houses, everybody is looking for um, what will be of benefit to them. And so um, it still boils down to creating an enabling environment. Um, at this point, the government is the custodian of land and um, the government will still need to step in because if the government steps back and allow a um, few private individuals to decide to determine what happens in terms of building then it, then it, it, people are going to have issues with where to um, have it from time to time and so one of the things that there has to be a stick uh, more like a town hall meeting or a stakeholder forum where um, landlord the people who own property real estate and the government can sit down and find out how can we make affordable housing uh, affordable? So it's going to be more of a government and private um, initiative to be able to meet this thing. Because even if you um, you are a government official, you're not going to be a government official forever. And even if you're living in a private apartment, definitely you're still going to use the same public road. Everybody says there's no private road and there's no public road. Everybody will still make use of the same government amenities. So it has to be a round. There has to be a roundtable forum where we look at okay, how do we address these things collectively? Because um, there's the people who are build developing private properties are also buying uh, the building materials from the same market. Government officials are are also buying. So there has to be a stakeholder meeting between to say okay, how do we resolve this issue? Because it's affecting every one of us in one way or the other. So we cannot. Um, no, no party is exempted from the impact of what is currently happening. Hope I've been able to address the, your question. Yes. Uh, now, Mr. Wilson, do you think Nigerians now, in the bid to cope with the inflation situation, are you know um, building their houses in bits and pieces? You know, we have instances of people building the parlor, then moving in, and then 
As time goes on, they keep building the other parts of the house. Do you think that's what's going on now? Uh, absolutely, because um, when if some people who have been able to buy a property, uh, a land before now, and they cannot cope with the cost, the rising cost of rent, maybe somebody who was paying a three hundred thousand for a two bedroom and suddenly has to pay seven hundred or a million naira, the alternative is say, okay, why don't I put some bricks together and even start with one room and be putting it bricks, bricks and bricks together. So that's actually what a lot of people are doing. But are they, but are they also at the detriment of their own health? Because um, it's not an easy task um, building and living in the same house. And but it's what situation has is the situation they found themselves. So that's why I encourage that there has to be a form of stakeholder meeting where um, the government, um, the building uh, people in the, bu the building material sector, real estate developers, and even individuals who are interested in owning homes can sit down and find out how can we make things work. All right. Um, now, let's talk about um, regulation. Is there a body, you know, or an agency responsible for, you know, uh, responsible for ensuring that houses meet a certain standard and the materials used are not inferior? Is there like a regulatory body in charge of that? Uh, well, there is a regulatory body for that. Um, you have um, the Nigerian um, Society of Engineers. You have the building contractor. You have the build, uh, Nigerian Association of Builders. And you also have the, uh, even the, uh, the Nigerian Institute of Surveyor and uh, Real Estate Evaluers because there are different um, bodies, even the Nigerian Institute of Architects, Yes, we have these bodies, but to the large extent, it's unfortunate that we're unable to carry out the, the necessary checks to ensure that um, building collapse are checkmated. Some people, some a few individuals just have a way of bypassing these protocols. So that is why um, beyond having these bodies, there is a need to encourage quality assurance and quality control. If we have quality assurance and quality control measures, it's going to really, really mitigate a lot of these collapse feeding issues. So it's beyond setting up an agency to checkmate. What and what are they checkmating? What are the checklists they have? And what are the criteria? And when somebody defaults, what are the penalties involved? Um, that, uh, and uh, the necessary fees, and who are the appropriate bodies that will prosecute such individuals from getting away with it? Until somebody is caught, people will not know how um, the importance of putting quality assurance and quality control measures in place to drive quality and excellence at all times. All right. So um, could you highlight for us some of um, the major uh, uh, challenges or obstacles those in this industry face? Um, just in case there is someone out there looking to get into the business and all that, what challenges would you um, highlight or would you say this industry faces time and time again and how can such, um, such challenges be overcome? Well, okay, um, you also have the issues of not meeting to um, requirements. Unfortunately, um, a lot of people in this sector don't even know what the, what, um, the maybe um, standard organization of Nigeria require or what um, the export promotion or some of these, uh, the, the, um, the regulatory bodies within the building material subsector. So for them to be able to encourage people to venture into the business so that they can, rather than having monopoly, so there can be an even spread of um, people coming in so that the prices, it will be based on demand and supply and not um, one a winner takes it all um, kind of um, situation. So one of the things that has to be done is uh, there has to be an there has to be a regular um, stakeholder meeting between the regulatory bodies and uh, the the manufacturers, the wholesalers, and the retailers. So when they have that signage, so if you are importing, you know the specification of what you are importing in. So you are not importing 
for your own pop, for your own selfish interest. Rather, you are importing because of the specific requirements. Now, when this is done, everybody is on ground to checkmate quality and ensure that only the best comes makes it into the into the Nigerian space. All right. Um, I would ask this question. If um, do you think there are some uh, uh, sellers of building materials who tend to um, sell at the same price just so that they don't uh, discourage their customers? You know, they sell at the same price and then they add those prices to other materials. For instance, um, you're selling cement, cement that used to be probably 4,000 naira. And now you, you, uh, you're saying to the customer that it is now 5,100. And the customer is like, what? And the customer is dissuaded and leaves. You know, do you think this, um, these sellers, in the bid to, you know, to mitigate the situation and ensure that the, seller, um, the customers still buy, they tend to still sell at the same price and then, you know, um, take, you know, um, the, the, um, the additional amount, the inflated amount, and add it to other materials to ensure that customers still come. Do you think that is a good strategy to uh, apply in this situation? Well, um, there is no strategy that is uh, perfect. We all try to see how to fine tune one or two things um, because the, the seller wants, to, wants buy, people to buy and the buyer wants to also buy from the seller. So um, the issue of um, looking for ways to, cut, um, to offer discounts, well, uh, everybody is trying to maximize profit at, at one way or the other. So it's a good, um, it is a welcome development if that is done, but it's actually not sustainable. So um, this is where customer relationship management comes in. One of the reasons that one of the things that turns people off when they come into such situation is um, somebody will tell you that I imported, um, I bought at so and so price, but this is the current market price, so I am not selling below this. So the question that will now be is what other alternative do you have to what you currently have? So that is where um, negotiation skills come in. You now look for ways of, okay, what other substitutes? that can, um, if you cannot meet it up to 100%, what also can serve for, um, can give you at least a 70%, then if the person does not have the resources to buy bulk, you could offer incentive to say, okay, you can buy this, um, you can make a deposit of this amount so that we can secure the goods for you. Then you work around how to um, get, more, um, get more funds so that you can buy the things you want to buy. Because, uh, for example, um, a toilet seat I bought um, two years ago at um, 17,000, 18,000. At the moment, it's about 27, going to 30,000. So what you could do at that point is, what do you have available to deposit in order to secure what you want to buy? Based on that negotiation you have with the seller, you are able to... Um, to be able to reach a good compromise and able to have what will serve you rather than what will make you keep coming back to the market. All right, Mr. Wilson, do you think there would ever come a time in Nigeria where we'll have deflation in that things would, prices of materials would become lower? Because there are some people out there who are waiting, to, uh, waiting for the time where things will become cheaper and then they can build their houses because they're like, things are too expensive now. Let us wait. Probably later, you know, these prices will come down and then we can afford to build our houses. What do you have to say to that? Well, <laughs> I'm laughing here because um, prices really don't come down like that. It's just for us to wake up to the reality on ground and look for ways of stepping up to it. So, the, like the principle I adopt is buy what you have to buy with what you have at the time you have to buy it rather than waiting for the price to come down. It might come down, but it may not be significantly low the way you want to buy it. So you just make sure that uh, you get um, resources available to buy what you need to buy at the right time you need to buy them. That's just uh, the more realistic approach to it. 
But to say that the price of cement will come back to 1.5, that would be a miracle. But it's not impossible. It's very, very possible. But we should not... Okay, um, um, now, when it comes to uh, the use of alternative materials, for instance, instead of using... Uh, I don't know the example I want to give, but you get the idea. Alternative materials. Yeah, so if you can't afford um, this, you can get something that is not as, you know, as superior, but something close that can also serve. Do you think that is another approach to go about it? Do you think that is an approach um, customers or consumers of this product uh, adopt now to ensure that they still get to build their houses? Uh, whether or not the inflation is, uh, you know, is something to deal with? Well, <laughs> it's something that um, a lot of, that, is in, that is being practiced in the market. But however, you also look at it in terms of brand. If you're, I don't want to mention a name. Okay, let's say if you're using a Dangote cement, you're using a Bois, um, there are other, you look at um, other alternatives to use. If you cannot afford the high quality brand, what other brand do you have that can actually serve you? Just like when you're looking at um, um, electric wires and cables, you may not be able to afford the, um, the top standard ones, but there are also actually available ones that can actually serve the purpose. So that's where when you're going to do such, you make sure you go with somebody who is technically sound, who knows what to do. Because it's more about improvisation. How do we improvise? Um, not to the extreme, but improvise that can actually give us the maximum results that we need. Okay. And do you also think that this inflation um, issue is causing people to build houses in more remote places? Because funny how um, the price of, of materials are different depending on the location. You know, so do you think this is encouraging more people to, you know, go out of the urban uh, settlements to more rural parts to ensure that they can at least afford to build in those parts? Well, to an extent, it is affecting that. But on the, on, on the alternative, you also look at the cost of transportation. Even if you buy cheaper at somewhere, the cost of transporting what from where you bought to where you need it becomes um, another factor. So it might actually reduce the quantity of where you're buying. Let's say you are buying, you are staying um, on the mainland and um, you are moving to Lake Aja or maybe Ekwe, for example. Um, where you're going to buy, if you go to maybe an Alaba market to pick those materials, the cost of moving from um, the major market to where um, you need it when you factor that price it, going to buy from a nearby market it, close to the remote area where you are building would have solved a lot of problems for you so well it's encouraging people to go remotely but at the same time um, when you look at the cost of living and the cost of transportation around it may not be a wise economic decision so you might have your house, but there are other factors to contend with that you may not have factored in. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wilson. That is uh, the much we can take on Business Insight today. I don't know if you have final thoughts you want to share with us before we round up, Mr. Wilson. Okay. Um, I just want to encourage everybody out there, no matter how tough it seems, don't give up on um, whatever you want to do. Just keep trying and... Um, if you're building, make up your, if you're whatever, whether you're building or you're intending to build, don't allow um, the temporary situation to make you take a permanent decision. We will all come out of this.